<laughs> now with Cracker Lacking, uh, yo, so I was gonna call these uncensored conversations, but you know my panel won't be with me, so it, it wouldn't be right for me to call these videos uncensored conversation when I ain't got the camp with me, you know what I'm saying? So my videos from here on out, when I'm by myself, it, my segment is gonna be called Listen to Lacey up in this mug. So today, you know, yesterday I talked about peace of mind. So today I want to talk to y'all about ambition versus being inspired. You know what I'm saying? So I want to talk. So for that, I am going to use me, my story that I told y'all I was going to tell y'all. My story about me being a filmmaker, uh, how I became a filmmaker. You know what I'm saying? The obstacles and everything I had to. And then we're going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, being ambitious versus being inspired. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so one day, I think this was probably, hmm, I think 2011, I want to say, probably 2011, 2012. So, I had just finished tutoring. Uh, I was uh, serving with AmeriCorps, you know what I'm saying? So, I was in the school system. Uh, I was in the school system. I was tutoring third grade and mentoring uh, fifth graders, you know what I'm saying? So, one of the best, I think that was one of the best jobs I had because um, I got to be in the school system for a whole year and I got to see how like you know the school system really was you know I had my a classroom I uh, had my own students like I had 11 students so I used to go in their classrooms take them out through all the day and teach them and tutor them in literacy so but anyway so after that ended I wasn't doing nothing I was just was good uh was that I was was good with it bars salute so I wasn't doing nothing one day and I was like you know what I want to make movies. I just woke up one day because I've always loved movies, you know what I'm saying? Like, and not for the just, you know, how everybody else watch it for entertainment. I was always fascinated about, like, the technical side of the film. Like, ooh, I love that shot. How did they do this or whatever? So one day I woke up. I was like, okay, I want to make movies. So I was all excited. I was like, yeah. So I was on the internet Googling. I was like, okay, who had the best school? Who got the best school for, you know, filmmaking or whatever so it turned out to be webster university so i was all amp i was saying i was like yes so i went to i went to webster university i was like hey i want to make films bam let's get it cracking and i had a big awakening they was like okay they looked at my transcript because i hadn't been to college in over 10 years what was that uh it was good with a tony ray salute i had been to college in over 10 years so they was like uh sir you have a 1.8 it was 1.6 1.8 one of gpa and you know so i had never been so focused in my life though so anybody else they probably would have been like oh man well forget it then i ain't do it but this like let me show you how a uh, guy works you know what i'm saying this, this let me know when if you have a passion and a goal and a dream this is how you know that you're that you're living in your dream and your goal so i told you i had been to college in 10 years because 10 years before then, I had just graduated out of, you know, high school stuff. Like, I ain't give a care about college uh, as soon as I graduated high school. You know how we playing around and everything. So, GPA dips. So, it so happens when they told me that, they was like, well, go see, try to go to a, a community college for a couple semesters and then see, you know, that, uh, and then come back to us and let us know then. So, it just so happens that, uh, who is this? Uh, shout out my uh, screen trip. shout out to keisha shout out to tt royal shout out to Diane. so um so i went to forest park and it just so happened that they had a program that if you had been to school in 10 years that they had dropped off a lot of your bad grades and i was right at the 10 year mark so with them dropping off all my bad grades uh well not all of them they dropped a lot of them they didn't take off all your bad grades so with that, I went to Forest Park and uh, Merrimack for three semesters, so I got a 4.0. Uh, so with the 4.0, like all three semesters, and with them dropping off a, a lot of my bad grades, I left there with a 3.5. So I, I went there three semesters, so I went back to Webster, like, bam, you see I did this. They was like, oh, okay, okay, welcome. So the first semester, though, they put me on probationary period. But like I said, I was so focused this time, but I was like, you know, like 10 years ago, I didn't care. So I, I told him, I said, I'm finna get straight A's, straight A's this first semester, which I did, you know what I'm saying? So needless to say, 
Uh, I, I graduated from Webster with a a, a 3.8. You know, um, it could have been a 4.0. It was it was my fault though. But I was because I had lost one of my books. But you know whatever. But I was always sitting at the front of the class. I always cared about my grades and all that type of stuff. But even with the filmmaking, like I learned a lot of stuff from Webster. I did. Um, work study in the media center where they had all the cameras and all that type of stuff at. Uh got to work on my films. So I'm I'm about to get into the ambitious versus inspired, you know, detail. But to, uh tomorrow I'm gonna tell you guys another story about when I was making films at Webster, something I had to go through. But anyway, so let me get to the uh being ambitious versus being inspired. So uh anybody who's been in my life if like you are an actor, a friend of mine, I always tell them this story about being ambitious, being ambitious versus being inspired. You know what I'm saying? So I tell everybody, like I had one of my friends, uh, he was in one of my films. Um, he was in one of my films and he always to this day, like nobody would give him a chance. Nobody gave would give him a shot or uh, none of this. You know what I'm saying? Like he auditioned for lots of films and everything. So he always to this day thanked me like, man, you gave me my first shot. You put me in my first film, and then after everybody saw me, it, you know, start getting the more roles. Uh, people seen him in Atlanta, and then he went to Atlanta and got on this big show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it was called Bag Man. It might still be going on. I know, but needless to say, uh, when he went down, or his life started spiraling out of control. Like you know, like uh, this guy right here, he was so you know he's so focused on his craft that. He like then crazy was like gonna do whatever he had to do to get, you know, to where he wanted to get in life. So he was being very ambitious. So I tell everybody, being ambitious is very dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're ambitious, you like sell out anybody, your family, friends. You don't care about anything. You do whatever you got to do to make it. And that's what kind of happened to my. Uh, partner you know like he still he lost uh his family not like that by death but you know like uh, i guess neglecting him you know what i'm saying then they uh came back to st louis he started i think drinking i think the door drugs or something like that so he called me one day and i told him i was like bro i said i told him it's two things i said it's being ambition and it's being inspired i told him when you're being ambitious like you're 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 doing like you're not you know what i'm saying you're, you're doing anything to try to make you sell it out to anybody you don't care about your family i said when you're being inspired by something where you're living and just not in the word of god but when you're being inspired to do something when you know it's of spirit form doors will open up for you That's, and and it really hit them you know what i'm saying and i live by that all the time just um like when i was making my film so when i was in school uh everybody was like Making, you know, we got to do two films. I got to do a film in my junior year and my senior thesis film. So while everybody was making these, you know, corny films and all, I ain't gonna say corny films. Some of it was good, um, but I almost, almost, also must say I was the only African American in the film program at that time. Period. You know what I'm saying? I think in a couple of years they had more, but I was the only African American in the film program. Graduated with honors and all that type of stuff. But when I was in school, I was like, okay, these films that I'm making are going to be like my resume. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how you take a resume, you try to get a job. So I was like, I want to make something powerful. You know, I've always been a filmmaker where I didn't want to make anything like, um, you know, just with no purpose. Or, you know, none of that type of stuff. So I always wanted to make a purpose. So my my first film uh, was called Right Hand Man. It was like a relationship drama. You know, I wanted to do something creatively that deals with, uh, I guess you could say, jealousy, communication, trust and communication. Because you know in a relationship, trust and communication are the biggest two things why relationships end. So I was like, okay, I wanted to do something with that. Then with my senior film, I did, I wanted to do something about bullying. You know what I'm saying? And... Because that's one a big thing. I always try to do films with, with purpose and substance and something that creates dialogue. Okay, so I did those two films. So um, if I was in, ambitious, I would have been like, okay, get to get money off this now. I got to get money. Like like I say, don't ever do anything. If you have a passion, don't ever 
doing it just for money. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you really love something, do it because you love it and the doors will open. So anyway, I took those two films and um, so I took those two films and entered it into the the film festival, you know, and this is me, once again, just being inspired, like, I was like inspired, I was like, okay, I believe in these films that, that are powerful, so I think I'm the only person who I, it was the last day, I think for me, I think it was May the 31st, I think that was, yeah, that was the last day that you could enter your film into the film festival, so I took it down there personally, um, uh, I gave it to Chris, Chris Phillips, he's uh, over the whole, you know, International Film Festival and everything. And so this was the St. Louis Showcase or whatever. So I took it down there and he called me back. And I was going out of town that day too. I forgot where I went out of town. So I dropped him off and I was out of town. And he called me right back that night. And he was like, man, I watched both of your films already. He said, I'm not supposed to probably tell you this. But both of your, I'm putting both of your films at the showcase. You know, I think that was the first time that two films by any person got played at the showcase, you know, in the St. Louis showcase. Um, so once again, I was like being inspired. I didn't have to do anything. You even had have to do no underhand, backhand type of stuff, you know, to get where I, to get where I wanted to be. So then after that, um, people loved it. You know what I'm saying? Even before then, before even a film festival, well, I'll tell y'all that tomorrow when I tell y'all the other story. But people loved it, like, was going crazy about it. And what was so phenomenal is that the audience loved it so much that Chris wanted to put my film about bullying into their international film festival, you know what I'm saying? The St. Louis International Film Festival, which was the biggest thing. And he wanted to show it. Uh, he showed it before, like, their biggest feature they had at the time, which was, I think, Four-Way Stop. I think that was the name of the film. So he's like, he wanted to put it. He believed in that film so much that he put it in there. And what made me do those films was me being inspired, you know what I'm saying, to even do those films. Like, I could have did some, like, stupid stuff, some party stuff, some shoot em up bang, bang. But I was inspired. When, like I said, when you're inspired by stuff, doors will open up for you. Like, I was inspired to do the film about bullying. I was inspired to do the relationship drama, you know what I'm saying? And by me doing that, um, and, and just having a cool, down-to-earth per personality, by me doing all that, then that opened doors up for me to be in a newspaper. Chris, Chris, like I said, Chris was like, man, I love, like, he's like, you cool, I like your vibe. He, um, hit up the, uh, this lady who was doing a newspaper about me. Then at another, I started getting into, you know, more uh, publications, whatever, you know what I'm saying? A lot of stories started getting wrote about my films and everything. Um, started getting um, Fox 2, ABC, uh, going to Hollywood, all this type of stuff. Um, and while doing all this, I maintain the level of being down to earth, you know what I'm saying? Don't, ever be too arrogant or just think you just know everything because you don't you know what i'm saying so um and like i said and it's just me sitting in that space of being inspired like i don't never do things to like try to like, all right let me see if i can get over on this person or get uh you know take advantage of this so like even with me making these films like i feel this my purpose on this i feel my purpose on the earth is to help people so I know me as a filmmaker, I'm probably the only filmmaker, you know, like, you know, that's a lot of wannabe filmmakers out here, you know, don't take it. But I'm probably the only filmmaker who actually went to school and, you know, got the degree and everything, who takes chances on people who've never acted before, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it is a risk, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it burns you, sometimes it don't. But I'm a person who, like, um, like I said, I, I like to help people out with their dreams. So I, that's another thing is being inspired. Like being inspired to help people out who like who want to act but will never get that chance from nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, who don't have a resume, a, a film resume out there. You have to start somewhere. So um, if I see people who like, if I think they got talent or they have a, a unique look to me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you a chance. Like do you want to act? Have you ever thought about acting? And I'm going to give you that chance. And... That's another thing by me being inspired. I you know 
helped a lot of people out here. You know, like a lot of people who I've helped uh, and start doing fashion shows and did other films and just start doing all type of stuff. And that's uh, that makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? Because it feels like I opened the door for a lot of people in St. Louis, and that entails, you know. Uh, just got my name out there even more, you know, which is not about that, but um, I just like helping people. So it's nothing, like I said yesterday, it's nothing more like great than uh, you doing this film, getting your actors, and then selling out movie theaters, and then you get to see the actors go to the front row. Well, first they get to see themselves on a big screen, a family, friends, super excited, everybody's there, the energy is great. Get to see themselves on the screen, and then get to talk to people. You know what I'm saying? So once so again, once I said once again by me being inspired, then in turn start making me build relationships with uh, theater owners and all this type of stuff, and uh, bringing out crowds like uh, bringing out crowds of over 300. Like I've done so much stuff, uh, and it's probably in the, like the last three years I've done so much stuff, uh, and it just come from me being inspired. Not trying to, like I said, not trying to get over on people. And I like, uh, like, an actress came to me before. She was like, "Oh my God, I really want to be in your film. Uh, how much, um, how much do I got to pay you to be in it?" And I could have been underhanded, be like, "Oh yeah, pay me, oh yeah, okay, yeah, give me like a uh, three hundred dollars." But now nah, I was like, "Oh no, I was like, you don't have to pay me anything, you know." So I was like, "If you got talent, you good. I'm gonna audition you, and if I have a role for you, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put you up in it." So, uh, with that being said, like I've, I've made a lot of my films have made it to festivals in and out of town. Like uh, I tried, like I've, like I said, I've always been inspired. Like I was inspired to do a horror film. One day I was up walk, uh, watching, uh, I think it was the making of Freddy Krueger. They were showing all the Freddy Krueger, how they made it and everything. And I was like, I don't want to just be a, you know how people just got their little niche. I was like, I'm not just going to be a drama. A drama writer and director, film writer and director. I want to be. I want to make a horror film, and it comes with studying, like being inspired to even look it up. Some people, like I said, some people are ambitious. They be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna do a film," and they just, without them, and that's being ambitious. They like to do a film for sell, for sell tickets, and that's without them taking the time to be like, "Okay, how do I post to do this? Uh, I post to write a script." There's a lot of Films made her with no scripts where they just have people show up and it's like telling people what to do. And then when the finished product come out, you can tell like, okay, they ain't got no script. So you got to take your time out. So I took my time out to say, okay, how do, how do, how do, I, how do you supposed to make a horror film? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, my partner, Justin, I had sent him some stuff. I said, hey, this is how you supposed to shoot a horror film in this type of camera set you got to set your camera settings there so he studied there how to set your uh, camera settings you know I, I started looking at okay backstory how do you do the horror backstory you're coming up with creative characters right you know what I'm saying I did a uh, I wrote some of the script and then I picked my actors and did a little screen test to see who I felt before I even finished the script I was like okay let me see which person in here gonna be who's strong enough to be a leading character you know and then I was like as we did a table read of the partial script, I picked that person out. Like you have to do your due diligence. Like, like I said, money will come, all that stuff will come, but you have to be inspired to do something. So, uh, I really took time to do my horror film Flocka by me being inspired and not trying to rush it and not saying, "Oh yeah, but just make this real quick and do this to make money." By me being inspired, then in turn, uh, brought out big. Like I think, I think we brought out two hundred some people in. The St. Louis Gallery of Theater for that, but not only that, then that in turn made my film Flocka get into the film fest. You know, they got chosen to be inside the film fest. So my whole thing, my my main thing is like, as I live and continue to live, I tell people just always be inspired to do something. Don't do stuff for buddy. Don't be so ambitious that you will sell out your family, uh, anything to get to where you're going because you need, you know what I'm saying, the people who who rock with you, you need them same people, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to shit on the people who um, left you down, I mean, you don't want to, you know, mess on the people who help you get to where you're going, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to, 
Cause you never know who you gonna need. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't ever, don't just be mean to people because they're not in a position that you feel they're not in a position yet. You know, like, I look at you, you little or not? Cause that person can grow to be a big executive or somebody you might need years down the line later. And you be like, dang, I was being mean to this person. You know what I'm saying? So, always be nice to people. Um, like I said, and just keep an open mind, keep an open heart, and always be inspired. Never be ambitious. I know. A lot of people that's just ambitious and 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 I can't you know I can't say that they're not gonna you know someone might make it you know what I'm saying by being ambitious but I think if you're inspired you're gonna always in the inside you're gonna always feel good about yourself you know what I'm saying when you have that part when you're not just doing stuff just for money when you care about people like I've always cared about people you know what I'm saying like I'm never like, of course, like I said, of course I wanted money or stuff, but I've always cared about people, like kids. Like I want, I'm working on a nonprofit right now where I want to go back into the schools and teach children, film who deal with issues, and like let them know you ain't got to fight and all this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm working on like things like that. I'm, um, um, you know, what I'm saying just doing a lot, just doing a lot of stuff, doing music. I'm working on my mixtape now, uh, called Therapy Session, and you know that's me, like digging deep into myself like okay why have i been the way i've been throughout my whole entire life in relationships you know what i'm saying like so i always try to do things with meaning and substance and being inspired to do it like i didn't say okay i'm gonna do a mixtape let me rap about money cars and women and all that type of stuff like anything i do is substance and import of, of importance you know um so yeah that's all i gotta really say you know what i'm saying be inspired, God. Whatever you do in life, whatever you want to do in life, just make sure you're inspired to do it. Do not do it for purposes of negativity or evilness or anything or, you know what I'm saying, plotting or all this type of stuff. Like, if you want to do a salon, if you want to paint, you know, if you want to open up a store, make sure you're doing it because you're inspired to do it. Because when you're inspired, doors will open quicker trust me you know what i'm saying when you're ambitious you're going to this a lot of stuff going here you're going to go this destroy friendships relationships um and people remember that people don't people don't forget you know what i'm saying like they don't forget if you do them like dirty in business or you know what i'm saying all that type of stuff so uh just always be genuine with people always be inspired always be up for other people you know like I said, I I feel amazing at what I'm able to do. Like I tell people, you can do the same thing I'm doing. Like I'm no different from you. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, like I've done this by being inspired. You know what I'm saying? God opened the doors for me. Shoot, like I said, I sold out many the Moolah, St. Louis Gallery, a 24 award, probably the Chase Park Plaza. Um, been in multiple newspapers and all type of stuff like i've been on abc fox all type of stuff you know what i'm saying in a couple years you know i've uh, been a professional battle rapper for years like i've been doing music all my life like god has really blessed me and it comes from me being inspired and i feel like i got so much more to offer and give to the world and nothing like nothing stopping me like Nothing can stop me, like no evil forces or nothing because I'm living in my dream and I'm being inspired to do what I do, you know. So, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple of uh, films that I'm working on now. Like, I've done a lot. Oh, yes. One of my other films just got picked up for a film festival in uh, Moscow, Russia. They sent me an email first. You know, salute to them. <laughs> they sent me an email in Russian. For, you know, I couldn't read. I had to trans get it translated online. And it was like, uh, we love to have your film, uh, pr premiere your film. I heard they was like, will you be flying out? I was like, I ain't going to no rest. <laughs> I was like, is y'all crazy? Y'all try to kill me or something? Salute to y'all for premiering my film in Russia. But nah. but yeah, man, so I, shoot, almost every film I did almost made it into a film festival. And that's because I take my time with it. It's substance, uh, real story life, and all this type of stuff. So working on some uh, other uh, big projects that I should have coming this year. Um, I also did my comedy, Uncensored Stage, you know. So, uh, 
want to do a part two of that, but I'm really working on a lot of other projects. So if anybody want to act, if you know anybody who want to be an actor or anything, tell me to hit me up. I take chances on people. But I'm really finna uh, uh, start working with a lot of more, you know, skilled, you know, professional actors also. But I still want to give chances to them up and coming people. So, yeah, I know anybody you want to act, just let me know. I got you. I'm gonna, uh, make, I try to make it happen for you. So, but the closing thing today, what we talked about, which y'all was sitting here with me and listen to. Make sure y'all share this video to your people. Share it to your family, do this. The biggest thing we want to let everybody know on Listen to Lacey's segment today was be inspired, not ambitious. When you're ambitious, you'll do anything to get to the top and sell out anybody. When you're inspired to do stuff, doors will open, you will have a free mind, free heart, and Things will just happen to you better in life. I am a living witness. I'm not telling y'all nothing to just be telling y'all. So if y'all got anything y'all want me to talk about in the future, inbox this, whatever, you know, topic. Like I said, all of us got knowledge or something. Knowledge is power. You know what I'm saying? Knowledge is power. So all of us done been through things. All of us done got some wisdom. So uh, I done been through some stuff you probably done been through probably been some, through some stuff that I haven't been through, but I want to share whatever I have been through with you You know what I'm saying? So, this is your boy, j j j j j j g soldier signing out. Listen to Lacey segments, bro. I'm going to be popping these all the time. So, peace and her grease to all my people. I love y'all. Y'all already know this. Team bars in the house. Y'all always going to be team bars. When y'all see me, when y'all read my comments, go ahead and say bars to your all right, bars. Hold on. Let me uh see if I let me see if I see if shout out. Uh, what up, Gwendolyn? Shout out to Gwendolyn, Carl James, Ty J, uh, everybody, Tawana, uh, this uh, everybody. I got so many copies. All right, I love y'all. Yeah, peace and her grace. I'm about this peace. Bar salute.